So my name is Marc Dusmet. Um, I'm now in private practice in Switzerland and I'm the Chief Medical Officer of Precise. I'm also the former Chairman of the Department of Ophthalmology in the University of Amsterdam. So um, I in fact got involved in this project before Precise ever existed. Um, at the time I was the chair in Amsterdam and with some professors in Eindhoven we started this project to create a micro uh, robot that would allow us to carry out a vitreoretinal surgery and with the ultimate aim of being able to take it out of the operating room into an office setting. And when um, after two PhD students graduated and created the uh, first uh, prototype, uh, Precise was created a little bit later and I became the chief medical officer of the company. Well, we should take it in steps. I think at this stage the robot gives high precision and also uh, positional memory. So it will help surgeons uh, in particular do things they're unable to do today and also remove some of the stress of performing the surgery by being able to give them um, uh, bounds uh, beyond which they, they won't in fact end up causing injury. So that's maybe part of the, under quotes, uh, drudgery we face is that we're always under tension when we're operating. So being being able to eliminate that and render surgery more comfortable is one of the aims. At a later stage, obviously we'll be able to automate a lot of the steps that we carry out, like standard vitrectomies, uh, carrying out uh, cataract surgery. These are all things that are programmable. It all really comes down to a question of being able to create the right computer program to carry out the function you want. Currently, uh, to be honest, not so much so far. Um, we're, we're really looking at being able to uh, use it in new procedures, for example, for gene therapy. Uh, we are, in fact, hoping very shortly that it will be able to carry out uh, peels in a very controlled way. We're also investigating the possibility of using the robotic arm to, pr to provide very precise illumination that would follow the surgeon's movements as he's trying to, for example, do complex peeling procedures. Yeah, well, faster is a is a something that we still have to demonstrate and be able to work on. I think one of the big advantages of miniaturization is that the whole setup can be then uh, secured around the head. We can provide also, for example, sterility with a miniature uh, systems that it can be placed around the head and up to, let's say, the thorax. And so we don't need to use an operating room. If we can move it out of the uh, operating room and out of the hospital into um, people's offices or, uh, or daycare clinics, we can then increase throughput because the whole procedure to get somebody into an operating room becomes much easier. In 10 years time, um, once we start uh, developing systems that allow us to do visualization, we can uh, get the robot to essentially use a, uh, could be an OCT form of visualization or a video camera, would be able to carry out automated procedures. Um, we'll be able also to, uh, for example, um, monitor new types of procedures that are being developed and by being able to uh, automate this and, and bring it into a computer system, then any surgeon would be be able to emulate what has been achieved, for example, uh, either in southern Spain or in Japan or somewhere else, uh, it could be done uh, safely by somebody uh, off in the uh, backwoods of, um, of Canada. I think you could go a step further, is if we knew, for example, from having taped sufficient number of surgeries that uh, uh, a, a, a particular movement or, or, or motion was going to lead to complications, we could in fact build in safety measures in, in the type of surgery. So not only make a choice maybe as to what the, uh, a better surgery might be, but make the surgery essentially much safer. Well, there are two aspects with regards to training. And at least in continental Europe, a lot of uh, residents now first have to go through simulators before they're allowed to do surgery. So if this really becomes uh, uh, a trend throughout the world, we could easily uh, envisage people going from the simulator over to a robotic system for surgery. With regards to new procedures being developed by a surgeon somewhere else, uh, if we're able to tape the motions that are being done and, uh, and break it down into the various 
various steps that are required to carry out the procedure, that can be memorized, it could be transferred to any other surgeon who could then use these steps either to learn how to do it in a simulator or to carry it out directly using the robotic system if you have a similar patient. I haven't used it in patients but I've uh, certainly used it on, uh, on animals and I've uh, done a lot of simulations and there are a number of features that are very nice. The fact that you can uh, have um, memory in terms of the exact position, you can let go, do something else, come back and continue your surgery, it eliminates tremor, it remembers the last position that you've uh, for example operated so if you have to switch an instrument it can be done while you're uh, keeping your eye on the, uh, the retina deciding what your next move will be while the instrument comes back exactly to where you left off and you can continue. These are features and things that you know any surgeon would like to have because it makes your life a lot easier but we haven't had so far. It takes five years to train a vitreoretinal surgeon and after 10 years they become very good and then you have to retire 10 years later. So yes, you would eliminate tremor and if you think about it, uh, uh, people that are about 60, 65 have this tremendous amount of experience. They now stop doing the surgery and in fact they're probably the best people to judge who needs to be operated and not and so you extend their ability to carry out. The fact that robotics, of course, has a cost, so you have to be able to bring a machine in that is able to do it. And I think the biggest cost saving will come from the fact that, if you think about it, if the robot takes care of the surgery and the surgeon, in fact, controls it directly uh, at the microscope or in front of the screen, you only need one circulating nurse. You eliminate part of the nursing staff that is there. And if we can put it outside of an OR setting, directly into a, an office, that eliminates a tremendous amount of cost and overhead. What can I say more about the robot? Obviously, I'm uh, very enthusiastic about it. I think there are many potential applications. There's still a long road to go. I'm just thankful that so many people, including yourself, are uh, also enthusiastic about its use.